Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Um, <clears throat> I think I'd just like to say, that's loud, uh, what a great privilege it is um, to be here presenting as part of CETA's inaugural um, BIM gathering. And to say, really, you know, looking out and looking around this morning, um, how, how intense and how large the support is uh, for BIM in Ireland. So that's how speaks volumes. So really, three elements to the, to the presentation this morning. Um, first up, just a little bit about why I'm here, uh, why Enterprise Ireland are interested in BIM. If it isn't obvious, there is some, some, some good reasons we see a future potential in, in investing in BIM. Second part is, I've, I've been in the UK looking at BIM over the last five or six years. There's been convergence. Um, and, and really breaking this down into to what's happening on the ground. So there's, there's a lot of industry consultation that we do amongst our own clients in the UK. So, so you know, what observations are we seeing now as, as the UK tr goes through this implementation curve? And finally, uh, a little bit about what Enterprise Ireland have done and what we're doing uh, around BIM and its further adoption. So uh, without further ado, I'll, um, I'll, I'll crack on. So why, why the interest in BIM? And I think just to, to outline that, um, maybe just give you a, a, a little um, an outline of, of the Enterprise Island remit in, in, in a very uh, sort of global context. So that is what the, the, the revenue per annum of, of Enterprise Island looks like. That's our, our funding. So in broad terms, it's about 330 million euros per annum. 250 million euros per annum goes into the funding for enterprise development which, and, uh, and, and investment in companies and, and, and seed and start-up. So of that 250 million, it's a big number. We've got about 80, 84 million in terms of administration cost. Um, and that is the money that allocates the investments into organisations, industry, into research, into third level. And why do we do that? Two objectives. One is growth and exports, and the second is, is job creation in Ireland. And are we doing that successfully? Are we investing successfully? That's what success looks like for us uh, in 2011, 2012, record levels of exports. So in terms of our allocation of, of 250 millions a year in our investments, we're seeing a return of between three and four times that. So for every euro spent, we're seeing a return of three to four euros in export gains. So we, we feel we're allocating successfully. And we allocate our investments across a number of sectors. But in the construction sector, we see building information modeling as an opportunity in the market, in the UK specifically, an opportunity for us to, to receive that kind of return in our, in our investment. Excuse me. So, do we believe there's an opportunity in BIM? Yes, we do. Is it a game changer? Yes, it is. And um, really, just want to outline some some observations. There has been and, and is a lot of hype uh, in the UK in the media. Um, there are a lot of organisations um, claiming amazing things, moving things forward. There is a, a BIM conference every week at least, that you can go to and, and, and learn about BIM. So there, there's a, a lot of hype, there's exaggerated claims, and there's vested interests that we need to navigate, but you know, is it real? And that's what I'd just like to explore for a, for a couple of minutes, and, and David Phil mentioned this in, in his presentation. Um, clients of construction are getting more engaged in projects than, than ever before. Clients are seeing more certainty of their outcomes than, than ever before. The visualization of the outcome, their ability to communicate that broadly through their stakeholders is, is giving far more certainty in terms of program, in terms of what they get at the end of the project. Their involvement, engagement through that delivery cycle. Um, you know, and I should have, if, if I'd have known, I'd have put Emily up there from, um, from Cook and Wood. 
Um, this, is, this is what happy clients look like, and if, if happy clients in construction seems a little bit far-fetched, um, let's look at, at these guys. These are the, the top ten main contractors in the UK. They'll all be names that you recognise. These guys are taking BIM very, very seriously, and they're taking it seriously for, for what looks like two clear reasons. BIM is giving main contractors an opportunity to form direct relationships with clients that, that traditionally they, they've struggled to do successfully. Um, design and build obviously comes with the caveats in, in terms of quality and, um, and, 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 and cost overrun traditionally. This is now a language, it's a communication, a medium that main contractors can move up the supply chain. They can move away from the tendering, they can move away from one, one and a half percent returns. Um, this is an opportunity for them to, to lead. The second reason the main contractors are looking at it very, very seriously is their ability to differentiate. To differentiate, you know, if you're a Kia, it's very difficult to differentiate what you do from a Skanska or an Interserve or a Galliford. They're all big organisations with, with strong capability. So they see BIM and, and leading in BIM and implementing BIM quickly and connecting with clients as a, a way of increasing and improving their margins. And, and they're all into, uh, implementing. So this is just, uh, just going to walk through you know, some of the, um, the way main contractors are, are, are marketing BIM. And um, you know, these are We've seen the creation of BIM Bibles and BIM manuals for clients and, and being, being a big part of, of their market propositions. So we're seeing organisations, we're seeing BIM at design stage. Um, we're seeing increasingly implementation of BIM on, on sites. But the point I want to get to is that we're not seeing the integration of specialists tier two beyond successfully into BIM uh, and we feel that's holding us back. Um, they've also mentioned that if you come from the UK it's mandatory to, to include this, um, <laughs> this slide. We've all seen it before. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different with it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chop it up, I'm going to explode the view, I'm going to add some colour to it. But I want to illustrate a point um, around BIM implementation and BIM productivity in the UK because it, it's, it's not um, all roses at the moment. You know, there is inefficiency in, in the implementation of the process. So I want to look specifically at, at level one and, and at level two. So we can lose level zero, level three. This, this is the area of focus. This is the, the implementation e equation that, 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 that I'd like you to consider. So we've got a timeline on there, we've got the 2016, the red line. We need to move through level one, level two. So I'm just going to put an axis on this. Um, we've got productivity on the y-axis across time on the x-axis. If we're going to move from a level of productivity, and, and, and just to remind ourselves, you know, this is a, a maturity diagram that was if you like, sold to Treasury and to the Cabinet Office on the basis of a 20% project cost saving. That's why we got the mandate to implement BIM. It's for 20% cost saving, as well as a vehicle to enhance low carbon. But ultimately, 2016, we're looking for 20% decreases in costs, which is a reciprocal, is a 25% is a increase in productivity. So that, that's, what, that's what we're looking to do, and, um, and we believe there are issues in, 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 in generating that level of productivity from the implementation of BIM in the UK currently. These are some of the observations that, that we're seeing that I'd, I'd like to share with you. Some of them I'm sure you, you, you've seen and, and felt yourself. Design models that are being developed by collaborative design teams attended, <clears throat> but what we're seeing is that the main contractors aren't taking that model, they're taking some geometry from it and some basic information, but they're developing their own models. That's wasteful. How can we, we provide a model that seamlessly drives through the design, the tender, the construction to the operation and asset management? 
It's not something we're seeing being done successfully at the moment, so there's duplication in the process and waste. We're seeing when contractors are, are involving their supply chain to become involved in a, in a project, to do BIM specifically for a project, again, it's, it's about creating a requirement for that project and not developing uh, a, a tool set that can be used uh, over a greater number and over a greater range. So we're seeing you know, a lot of cost um, being, being brought into that. Distribution of information, again, we haven't got a supply chain that can work with a model. We've got the, the, the cutting of, of PDFs, of drawings, of, of information being emailed around. It's not efficient. Supply choice, there's organisations who have lifted their game, who are able to, to, to work with the information needs of designers, who can work with contractors and lead them in the models. They're few and far between. There's a, a competitive advantage in there, um, um, but there's also uh, an opportunity, but it's limiting choice, and if, if BIM means limited choice, we're not going to realise the potential and the efficiency of, of a broad supplier choice. And finally, just the, the additional third party costs. So again, if there isn't the capability in the supply chain, if the contractor's building inf interfaces, there's additional costs, consultancies who, who are doing that, who are translating the 2D into 3D and into BIM. So we don't believe the implementation is a linear function between productivity and, and time. Um, we believe the implementation of productivity would be more of a curve. And if I just lose the model for, for a moment, <clears throat> we can see how, um, what, what that curve might, might look like. But, but clearly, there's a relationship um, between BIM efficiencies and the inefficiencies of, of BIM implementation. And, and while the, the inefficiency equals the efficiency, we have a flat line. And it's only when the efficiency outlines and, and removes some of the inefficiency that we'll begin to see an upward turn in productivity and a reduction in cost. So there's a journey there. What interests us is that relationship and what interests us the most, and I've highlighted it in, in, in the, the green triangles, which I'll give a bit more clarity on. This is where the, the gradient of the curve steepens. This is the convergence of uh, factors um, that will mean that productivity out, outstrips the, the inefficiency of, of adoption and integration, if you like. And these are the areas that, that we as an organisation have been looking at to see how we can, can move productivity on in line with some of the observations that we, we saw earlier. And for us, that has meant you know, what we've done and what we intend to do. Um, I'm, I'm running a little bit behind time, as I'm, I'm, I'm being reminded. So Damien's being a, a very good chair. Um, but this is uh, a little bit about what we've, what we've done, what, we've, what we're looking to do. Um, we have uh, designed uh, and implemented a program for the Tier 2 and, 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 and beyond in terms of integrating their capability to ensure that design models are improved, to ensure that they can meet contractors' needs in, in, in an efficient and cost-effective way. It started off as a BIM start program. If you put companies through, it's been designed and delivered, and it's something we're, we're looking to, to develop further. Now, this is a, a hypothesis that we've tested in the market, and, and, and this is some of the, the feedback that we've got from the, the early adapters of BIM designers and contractors across the UK. And really, this is what we've, we've attempted to, um, to, to, to nurture in terms of our programs for, for clients with the propensity to, to adopt BIM. We look to create uh, an environment for growth within their organisations that allows BIM to go from the seed of an idea to the implementation and, and, and cross-company implementation. Um, I would have gone into that in a little bit more detail, but I, I'm, I'm going to move on a little bit now. So what we've done, what we're doing, it's about building knowledge, it's about building capability across the indigenous Irish construction sector. It can't be done in isolation. Um, so we're, we're big supporters of, of CETA um, and, and funding of developing BIM in, in Ireland. We do need a healthy BIM construction sector in Ireland. We do need the experience of, of working, the referenceability um, to, to market and, and support BIM development overseas. So a good, healthy BIM 
industry in Ireland is, is, is very good for construction, it's very good for, for the messaging and, and the support of exports overseas. We will continue to lobby government, NDFA, Forfast in terms of the importance of BIM and you know, finally this is the sort of connection, this is the one-to-one -one that we do with, with client companies who are developing capability. It's, it's helping with their, their marketing, their messaging, their connection and, and you know, it's, it's all about winning at the end of the day and, and it's BIM, BIM to win. But that's the, the final part. So thank you very much um, for listening and um, thank you. Cheers. Thank you, John. Um, hope you didn't talk your way out of an opportunity to answer some questions. Um, we will try and recover a little bit of time, but if anybody has uh, any questions for John and his work in Enterprise Ireland or indeed in this presentation, um, we can take one or two short questions um, if we can. There's microphones on the, at the front there. If you can just uh, call out your name and uh, we'll take your question. Just when we're waiting, um, John, yeah. we're in quite difficult times. I'm just quite curious to see, as a segment, how the Irish group are getting on in terms of climbing the learning curve and getting ready for BIM in the UK. Um, how, how are they coping with that with perhaps constrained resources by virtue of the fact that they're there in the first place? Uh, I suppose uh, two, two real, real areas. Um, the connection of, of, of BIM with, with winning work, uh, of succeeding, of, of successfully differentiating yourself from, from your, your competitors, from your clients, is, has been enough of a motivation for, for a, a number of, of Irish practices working in the UK to, to adopt. Um, uh, I've touched on a point earlier, um, the SME is, is nimble enough, um, is um, is flexible enough to actually to adopt and, and demonstrate BIM capability uh, and implement that capability um, far quicker than the large organisations. So we talk about IT and ICT and, 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 and how liberating that is for, for small businesses um, in terms of the, the, the ability to, to market, in terms of the ability to implement quickly. And, and I think you know, BIM, it, it is an opportunity. Um, you know, we're all looking for certainty before, before we invest. Um, but if, if we can really make that connection between winning work and um, building capability, uh, I, I think that, that that's the essence of it. If, if we can if we can sense the opportunity is 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 there, um, then then the investment comes and the investment in time and training comes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, any other questions? In the gentleman at the front here. So, uh, Rich De Palma from Arcady Architects. Uh, are you, do you, would you consider the hype that's uh, surrounding them as being a positive or a negative aspect that, that, or a challenge that we have to overcome in terms of being legitimate in our statements? A good, a good question. Um, I think hype you know, creates a fantastic level of awareness. Um, but I, I think the complexity of vested interests, I think the complexity of of enhanced capability um, um, and the disconnect from reality is um, is, 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 is harmful. Uh, so it, it, it cuts both ways as, as, as media does. Um, but yeah, I think most people are, you know, we're kind of used to, to hype 24-7, um, so I think we, we, we can all cut through it and, and find out what, what our journey is through BIM. Okay, I see there are a couple of more questions.